Welcome to another edition of Leet Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, and uh, we're here in the morning uh, doing a pairing of breakfast tacos and wine. Now, I know somebody else has already done a breakfast and wine episode with cereal. Beat me to it. Anyway, so figured I'd do something a little different. Breakfast tacos pretty much invented here. At least, if not specifically San Antonio and South Texas. And um, until recently, you didn't know what a breakfast taco was if you lived outside of Texas. Now they're just starting to move out around the country. But to get the best breakfast tacos, you got to come here. So what I did is I have four breakfast tacos. This is my surprise one because this is the one I'm actually going to eat a little bit later here with my breakfast here in the morning. Um, and uh, the other three are actually tacos I would never eat. Because they, well, not never. Yeah, two of them have egg. I don't like eggs. One of them is a bean cheese and bacon taco. I'll probably end up liking it. But, um, so we're going to go right into it. So the first one we're going to do here, well, first actually we're going to go ahead and talk about the wine. All right, so this is the 2005 Vilm Gentil, or Gentile. Um, this is from Alsace. And it's a 2000, I said 2005? I think I did. Got this over at uh, Gabriel's for $7.99 and this is a blend of um, the noble grapes of Alsace um, or some of the noble grapes of Alsace and um, you notice that the camera is actually not the normal camera because the flip camera died on me this morning so um, that's another bummer about you know I'm kind of bummed about that but anyway hopefully flip will contact me soon and we'll uh, get a new camera or, or at least the batteries replaced on it but anyway, um, so uh, this is a blend. I don't have the specifics because it's really hard to find even just the, the, the varietals. But it's uh, Pinot Gris, Pinot Bianco, Muscat, and Riesling. Those are the four grapes that are used. Uh, they can't. They don't tell me the exact uh, percentages of each. Though th I did find something from the from the winery that said that 70 to 80 percent of the grapes are the noble grapes, which would be uh, the Riesling and the Pinot Gris. Um, so we will, uh, in the back says a, a traditional Vilm blend going back to the 19th century from grapes grown in the best hillside vineyards, and there's really nothing much. You know, their website didn't come up at all on a search, so, which is kind of weird, but anyway, maybe because in 2005 they put a website up and it has and it doesn't exist anymore. That happens sometimes with these wineries. All right, so we are going to try first the wine. Then we'll start doing food. And I figured this type of wine would pair well with, with this type of food. Alsatian wine normally pairs well with spicy food. We got the we got the salsa here. Alright, so somewhat typical of, of these wines, there's a bit of a fruitiness. Kind of a tropical fruit. And by the way, yes, it really is in the morning. It's 9.10. So, if you thought I was doing this in the afternoon, I was just having a little fun with breakfast. No, you know, I did wake up like 30, 40 minutes ago. So, so you get the normal tropical fruit uh, aromas. Um, you don't get much heat on it. But a little bit, but then again, of course, it's room temperature, so that's to be expected. But it's a pleasant, it's a pleasant aroma. That was really to get the toothpaste taste out of the mouth more than anything else. So 
so I get more of the tropical fruits. I mean, no one fruit really stands out. Maybe a little bit of melon is kind of uh, kind of peeking through there. And you get a little bit of spice, so a little spiciness with spice. Good mouthfeel, good acid. Um, I like it for eight dollars. I mean, in most of you probably will find the newer vintages, and this is really kind of near the end of its. It's probably getting near the end of its life. I mean, it's probably you know at the end of its peak. So um, if you have a two thousand five, I'd probably suggest you, you you drink it. So. Um, I don't know, rating-wise, I'd probably give it something like uh, 85. I mean, it's not spectacular, um, but it's it's not bad, and I think, it's, I think it's, it works pretty well. So, this should probably pair well with this. So, we're going to start with, this is an egg and potato taco. Um, so, it doesn't really sound very Mexican, but it's, you know, just stuff you put into a taco. So, it's not like, you know, there's anything different about these eggs or potatoes. Um, so we're going to try it without the salsa first. Why did I agree to do this? I didn't agree, I decided to. I shouldn't be taking such a big bite. You see, my thought process was eat the first one, eat the one I hate the most first. I'm going to get progressively better to the one I really like. Okay, just from the taste of the taco, this is probably going to pair well. So let's see. You know, it really does. I'm getting kind of a more of an apple-y flavor to it. And even on the nose, I started noticing it. But really on the palate, it was um, getting more apples with it. So that's kind of interesting. We're not going to have any more of this taco just because I'm just not going to talk about it. It just, it reaffirms I do not like eggs. So if everyone was kind of weird about why don't you like eggs? Because I don't like them. So it hasn't changed in however many years since I used to like eggs. Okay, as a kid. All right, so we're going to try This is a chorizo and egg. So the egg probably won't be as pronounced. Um, it's all blended in there. Um, chorizo is Mexican sausage. Uh, it's, uh, it tends to be kind of spicy. It's really good stuff. So... This isn't too bad as far as the flavors in the egg, but I'm still... Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan of the taco. But I'm doing this for you guys so I can get a good pairing. Hmm. That was an interesting flavors all of a sudden from the chorizo. So I see how it pairs with the wine. So believe it or not, the chorizo really gets enhanced by this wine. It's, it's more that the food gets enhanced rather than the wine gets enhanced. Um, you get an extra bit of spiciness from the chorizo, uh, but not like spiciness that's going to hurt you type of. like It, it just makes it more flavorful. So it's uh, making me think that this is a, a good wine pairing. All right, so we're going to do the, the, the next one here is a bean, cheese, and bacon taco. Now this... I will most likely enjoy a little bit more. Refi greens and me are kind of weird. I, I don't like them most of the time, but sometimes it's okay. So, and this is kind of a cool flavoring. So let's try this out. I mean, it's got bacon. I mean, come on.
This isn't too bad. I'd probably eat this again. So Vinny Crumbs is probably going to see. I told you. He's this guy on the camera. And I told you you'd like it. All the time I hear that. So I need pretty good. Maybe I'll start eating these again. It does remind me of Jimmy's Bean Dip. A little bit. Alright, now it's not so much. It's all good. But anyway, the initial was really good, but now I guess I'm really getting the beans. So in this one, the fruit's really coming through on the wine. Um, it's kind of interesting. So we went from the chorizo being enhanced to with the bean cheese and egg, I mean the bean cheese and, and uh, bacon, the fruit flavor is being enhanced. All right, so um, all three so far have worked pretty well. The, the, the egg and potato and the bean taco are probably the best pairings actually, in my honest opinion. Now we're going to open up this one. This is my favorite taco. Chorizo and potato. Now on this one, I'm going to put a little hot sauce on here. Just because I know I'm going to eat this taco. Because this is my breakfast. Oh, excuse me about that one. Who's going to say, was he trying on the 17th of December? This guy is. All right. So chorizo and, and, and the hot sauce... You know, make sure I get the hot sauce somewhere I'm going to eat, too, in that first bite. There we go. And this is like they make this at the restaurant. So, I mean, this is this is the good stuff. This isn't, you know, canned from New Jersey. My favorite taco. All right, so we got... The chorizo, the potato, and the hot sauce all working. Got the green hot sauce. I'm just going to do it from the bottle. For a second here. Even though I'm left handed, a lot of times my habit is to drink when I'm eating with my right hand. So that was my natural reaction. So with, with this, you're getting the spiciness of the hot sauce and the chorizo, playing off the off the spices of the um, of the wine, and uh, it's pretty good. Though I, I think really the those two other tacos probably pair better. We'll see because I got more potato in this. That's a good pairing. Um, the the wine helps with the spiciness of the of the hot sauce really more than anything else. I mean, I still can feel the spice from the hot sauce, but it's not as spicy. And um, yeah, I think it works. Good deal. So, first time you've ever seen anyone pair breakfast tacos and wine, and uh, I think it went pretty well. All right, so a couple things. Uh, first of all, I'm just glad that I'm back uh, from the hiatus. So. Um, not gonna use the the iPhone camera for for a minute here, so we'll see how that works because I gotta do something A school some point in time this week. So I keep promising Portugal and I haven't uh, haven't delivered yet, so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that one because um, I don't know if uh, Vinny Crumbs is gonna hold that camera for 30 40 minutes. <laughs> there might be, I think there's a thing if you can put on a tripod for for iPhone, so I might do that. Um, and I'm off today, so I may go uh, ask my buddy Davis. If they have those at the Apple Store, so I may just go pick that up. And they're probably not, probably like twenty bucks, if not, not even that much. All right. Um, so a few things. Um, so I've been on hiatus. 
and I went out of town, and I've been kind of really busy in the personal life, so the hiatus should be over now, provided that I don't have to worry about cameras now. Um, so I really appreciate it. The last video about the Heyman and Hill um, wine, excuse me, I'm sorry, um, this got over 240 views now, the number one view show in the history of 1337 Wine TV, and that's not just because you know, that's been the only thing on the website because most of the views are not coming from the website itself. So if you're watching this, go visit the website. So now here comes the money pitch. All right. So I haven't really bugged you guys a lot about, about <clears throat> contributing, but I'm going to bug you now. Uh, PayPal. There's a PayPal button for like a straight donation. Donate $7.99 or maybe it may make it, make it eight. Um, donate five bucks. Donate two. Donate whatever. Um, that helps pay for the wine. Because even though I have all these ads on there, the ads really aren't generating any money. So I'm thinking about taking off all the ads, or at least most of the ads. Um, so the only ads that actually generate anything is the Google ads, and they generate, I don't know, I think, I think all time I'm at $16 since the lifetime of my account. Because I actually have ads, Google ads on, on a blog somewhere. So, um, so again, it's not like I'm making any money off of this deal. Um, I mean, I've had one person give me money, and that was it. I'm going to change the subscription model from 2 to $5 a month. Hey, I'm sorry. Um, maybe if I do $5 a month, it might be more worth it for someone to, to do the subscription model. Uh, I'm still doing the scroll thing at the end for now about being an executive producer. If you do 50 bucks or more, you'll be an executive producer credit. Um, yes, I stole that from somebody. So, um, that's steal. I'm using it. I'm borrowing it. How about that? Um, so, please contribute um, because I've got to pay for this one. I, I spent about $120 a month. $150 a month on wine um, because I'm doing $10 and under normally. Uh, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm really sticking to try to stay at $10 and under. There might be that occasional $12 or $15, but um, just like there's going to be a wine sometime in the next week that's actually pretty expensive, but I suppose I already bought it. Um, so make sure you're doing that. Uh, friend me up on Twitter, Facebook. Tell your friends about it. Let people know. Email. Subscribe to the iTunes feed. There's a little button here that says iTunes. Hit that button, brings up your iTunes, and you subscribe to it. All right, so um, that's going to do it. This is kind of a long episode, really, because I've done all these tacos. And uh, we will see everybody again on Friday with another wine. Thanks for stopping by.